The Panopticon is the story of Annie Hendricks, who is 15 years old, and she is being taken in a police car across town to live in a new children's unit, which has been built in an old Panopticon building. And the Panopticons themselves are buildings built in a, a carved C shape so that there's one watchtower in the middle and whoever's in the watchtower can see in each of originally they were cells at all times. So it was kind of the original surveillance system, the original CCTV. Um, and it's really the story about Anais journey through KR. She's 15 years old, she's a year off leaving KR and she arrives at the Panopticon uh, handcuffed with her school uniform with blood on her school skirt and um, she's been accused of putting a policewoman in a coma and she can't remember actually what happened so she arrives in the Panopticon in a pretty dramatic way she's been in care all of her life she's moved um, I think upwards of 50 times at the point that we meet her in the book and um, she's aware of the system of institutionalization and what that means and she's very aware that a lot of the people around her won't make it out of that system properly and she's also aware of the attitudes of society towards who she is and where she comes from. I didn't write the book to make a comment on the care system but I was aware that you know the book is about the care system and I grew up in the care system so I was aware that it would make it would make a comment about the care system um, and that's probably why I didn't really originally want to write this novel I wanted to write a first novel that had lots of landscapes and was very different and it's such a hot topic um, but I was studying structuralism at the time and I kept looking at how society is structured and how you get the binary oppositions of self and other and, and, and how one's always superior and one's always inferior and um, I just kind of realised that I had a very unique insight into, into something and wanted to create um, a female character that to me was very real and didn't just fit into one box. And I was reading um, Not Hampson's Hunger at the time and uh, Journey to the End of Night by um, by Celine, and they both have quite tricky main protagonists that don't that aren't always comfort comfortable to be around. And I was quite fascinated by how you could kind of have the courage to write a character that you wouldn't always feel comfortable around, but that you're still very compelled um, to spend time with. So I was aware that it would make some kind of comment on the system, but really I was looking to just create a real character that happened to live within it. Really, I started the, the novel with one question, which was, is it possible to achieve autonomy? So if, in an A's, in an A's instance, society and the circumstances of her life have given her a specific message about who she is, is it possible for somebody like that to reclaim who they are and define their own future, define how they want to live, not just be a victim of circumstance? So really, she originated out of that question and um, my, own, my own background growing up in care obviously influenced the reality of the novel and the realness of the novel and the rawness of the novel. Um, <clears throat> but she was a lot, of different, a lot of different factors and really from the start of developing her she didn't, she didn't want to do kind of what the system wanted her to do and she didn't really want to do what I wanted her to do. And um, until I got it right and allowed her to speak for herself in the novel, it didn't work. And as soon as I let her speak for herself in the novel, including the fact that she speaks in Scottish, um, she then completely came to life as her own being.